My pleasure. There we go. So my name is Scott Loomis, as I mentioned, and I work with Tech for Learning. Um, I used to work in Baltimore County Public Schools teaching both elementary and middle school, uh, as then became a K-12 integration specialist in a position similar to what Debbie did with the county for a number of years. Although Debbie's pretty amazing, I probably wasn't even close to that. Um, today's session is on STEM, focusing on the creative uses. I think if you read the title, you uh, heard me comment about Jack Cousteau you know, passing out worksheets or dittos. It's like, oh my gosh, you got a great program like science or technology, maybe they're making something engineering math. I just am sad when I, when I think sometimes it's considered STEM education. So Wixie is really going to talk today. I'm going to talk a lot today about how to, how to tap into the creativity, how to capture their knowledge and understanding and allow that opportunity for kids to be creative and engaged in what they do. So here is my Wixie account. Your Wixie account should look similar, except your projects are going to be different than my projects. I'm also a little type A, so I like organizing things. So I've gone to the new folder. I've select new and then folder, excuse me. And then after I've created my new folder, I can simply right click or not right click. I can left click on the dots, the ellipsis, and move files into different folders. So you can organize your work and your my projects. Your students can as well. Now, I can see kids in the middle school or high school organizing work, maybe intermediate, but I don't understand why you'd make a first grader organize their work. Wixie's projects are organized by most recently open. So, for instance, students may have something they opened in the last few days here at the first one, but things they did back in August and September will show up at the bottom. So, you know, there's there's already that to it. So I can see use for organization. Don't go crazy with your younger kids. You know, use your time efficiently is where or effectively is where I'm going. Yeah. A couple of things you need to know about Wixie is you can access it from any device with internet connectivity as long as you're using a current browser. I'm talking Chrome, Edge, Safari, um, and it's got to be updated you know, for security concerns. So if you're trying to access it through Internet Explorer, just know it's not going to work. You know, that's That's been out of touch for a while now. Second, there is no save button in Wixie. If you're old, uh, achy knees like me, you'll recall the days when we told the kids to save and save often. You know, the world will end if you don't save every couple, you know, 10 minutes at a timer on the, on the, on the board and everything. Wixie just saves. There is no save button. It does that every 15 or 20 seconds. And what's nice is anything that is saved at that moment is automatically made available for teachers to see. So you could watch kids in their progression. It feels like a virtual group. But more importantly, you, the kids will never have to Dropbox anything for you. So there's no telling first graders, for example, to open this folder, click here, click here, and then save. Now that's 10 minutes and probably a couple of kids crying to get them to all do that. So Wixie makes it available immediately by just logging out of the program, which you can do through your profile. And if you assign templates, which a teacher can do, you can assign a templates to the whole class, small groups, or individuals. If you assign it in Wixie, it's the first thing they see when they log in at top. So Wixie is extremely efficient in that you can quickly get to your work and quickly exit your work. You don't have a lot of technology fluff to, to slow it down. And I know your high school kids are pretty fluent, but even then, you know, there's no, oh, I lost it excuses or anything else. So, uh, you know, that's that's kind of nice with Wixie. Students' lists are very similar, but they can't see, for instance, the students' work. They do not see the district folders, and they don't have the Wixie 101, which is a great how-to or help section as well as your showcase. They have their own kind of showcase or show and tell here. So I'm gonna go back to my projects. When you are creating new projects, and we got some media folks here too, just know that you can do your basic portrait and landscape, but there's also these fancy book templates. And I can see this with anything sequential. So I can see this with how to convert an improper fraction of math to step-by-step -step process for a science experiment and findings. As far as you know, everything from your from your hypothesis to your research to your notes and findings to your summary, I can easily see this for anything that is sequential because and I've been open up to us showing you today. And this is Wixie storyboard on the left, pages here on the work on it page, text, images, video up top, and paint tools. When you show a book template, it's like a book, it's like an ebook. Turns the pages. So this can lend itself to partitioning things into that, again, step-by-step -step mentality. You can also really easily do graphic novels and things, too. So I like that here. You can also open up straight to graphic organizers under new. Tell the kids which one to open. Let them choose, you know, based on tasks, whatnot. But a lot of graphic organizers just straight to opening up a project to work on there. However, I like new landscape because, you know, your screen's horizontal. 
So this is Wixie. If you've never used it before, I, I assume you get a little bit, or you know, if you're new, that's fine too. Um, as I mentioned, storyboard, adding pages here on the left. I think text images, including photos or videos on the top. The students can work in collaborative teams, and I will talk about this, meaning that a student can invite someone from just their section, just the 25 or so kids in their section, not another class, not another grade, well, unless they're like high school and they're in the same class, but not another school, just the 25 or so kids sections. One of them would invite the other or others, and they can all work real time or asynchronously if kids aren't there on the project or add to it at home after work, school or whatever. Uh, so that will give opportunities for kids to do collaborative projects, especially with things that, you know, might even be more summative for, you know, particular, you know, sharing particular insights or knowledge on, like I mentioned, science before, but interviewing, public service announcements, news broadcasts, they can easily work in teams or partition that project up so that their team creates the project as a whole, like a newscast. I once saw one on Egypt, a newscast, and it started off with, um, Oh, I think it started off in working conditions as slaves. They threw it over the weather girl, who was a, obviously a different person who did the flooding of the Nile, and then came back to the science report on the um, on the mummification project. So, you know, in this case, it was a newscast, but they had broken it up into three parts, each done by a separate person. Okay. And then paint tools on the right. Now, I like doing, I do this basic nature scene. Just know that our paint tools, it's nothing special. I mean, paint tools are paint tools, right? So I'm going to get something down. I do like the fact that with all of our paint tools, there are options. And these options are under the arrows to the right. So instead of just the basic 14 colors, there's there's the million point color box and sliders and things. So if you're looking for more detail, it is here. I'm gonna get a tree trunk. I'm gonna smudge it, which is a little like finger painting, but you can't mix colors, but it can give me like these roots in the ground. Makes me feel a little artistic here. And then I'm going to go to the spray can. Again, I don't wanna spray balloons or dots, undo what are my other options uh, there's a nature folder uh there we go so i'm going to spray no i want bigger leaves big honking leaves i'm just going to paint right over them i want leaves on my page so yeah paint tools are paint tools some basic stuff you know again i don't want kids spending too much time painting or drawing i'd rather them get to their content knowledge and to that end you need to go to our image library so when i click on images our clip art we call stickers there's over 10,000 stickers all subject areas, K to 12, you can see them in here. There are over 30,000 copyright free photos under Picks for Learning folder, including American Sign Language. Debbie, I forgot to mention that last session. And anything from music to notes, you name it, people, space, all sorts of fantastic photos. And in fact, when you do a search, something like deer, I spell correctly, it'll first show you the sticker results and then show you the photo results from Picks for Learning. And again, what's wonderful is that Picks for Learning, which is a website you can use with other programs, it's all here. So you can get these information, get the images or whatnot as quickly as you want. You could actually take a picture of something. And this screams STEM because kids can take pictures and then add like audio recordings on top explaining what they did, making their predictions. They can explain those mathematical processes, the science the results or whatnot. Um, so those are quite fantastic. You can also get images from your drive as well. So I'm going to go back to the stickers. Um, <laughs> my dog's barking at the door to go out. I got to decide how I'm going to handle this. Let me talk first about the recording tool. I know the, the, the ways of virtual instruction. So as much, and I couldn't get an image here. Dear. As much as I love kids typing, and we're going to come back to that, my favorite tool in the whole program is the microphone tool. The microphone tool allows you to add one audio recording per page, which can, last, which can last up to five minutes in length. That's five minutes for page one, that's five minutes for page two, so on and so forth. I see kids doing a lot of explaining right off the top of their head. I want you to draw the water cycle, draw it, then explain it. I want you to do a food pyramid. I want you to do a, a prey predator relationship. I want you to do whatever. You know, I want you to draw, you know, you look at like roller coasters or whatnot and start explaining them. And on each page, you can do a different type of recap. So to explain or, or to do a recording, you basically click on the microphone icon and you have the option, if you've never used it before, you may have to click to allow the microphone to talk to this web page. And you've never used it on this device. Every device requires you to prompt it. That's just usually how the firewall is set up. But once it's allowed, when you click recording, you get like a three second warning. So let's say we're doing seasons and the kid's just gonna talk about spring. Three, two, one. You know, this is a picture of the spring, 
in the spring, the uh, animals, uh, they, they are very happy because there's food on the tree and the temperatures are better and the trees are happy because they got leaves and they're growing and it's not as cold as it was in winter. And you can pause and resume as much as you want. Eventually you stop it and you can listen to it and try again or listen and keep. But even if you keep it, you can trash it. Again, one per page. So this allows for simple things, as I said, is describing, outlining, explaining. But then it also open, opens up the world for things like interviews, pretend to be something, uh, public service announcements. And one of the favorite I want to show you, which is going to lead into my go let my dog out because now he's starting to freak out. I don't know if you have a dog at home or pets, is that this is done by a second grader. And they've been doing PowerPoints for a while, but you know you got to do something more rigorous, especially if they're not presenting. And she basically interviewed a dinosaur. And I love it because she both asks the question and answers it in a dinosaur voice. So I'm going to play this for you to watch while I, while I head downstairs. Hi, my name is Jacqueline, and I am interviewing a dinosaur. So, dinosaur, what is your name and what does it mean? My name is Colopusus, and it means hollow form. So, Colophus, how big are you? I am exactly 50 pounds, 8 feet tall, and 10 feet long. Wow, that's small. But wait, Colossus, if you're that small, how do you defend yourself? Well, I'm very fast, so I could run away, and I have very sharp teeth and claws. Oh, well, that makes sense. So, Colossus, how exactly did you move? Well, I run fast on two legs. Okay, well, if you're that small, what do you eat? I am a carnivore, and I eat meat and reptiles. Wow, that's crazy. Wait, Colossus, what time period did you live in? Uh, Lake Triassic. Any other information? Well, I lived and hunted in packs and went as, and was one of the earliest known dinosaurs. Cool. Is that it? That's all I can remember, because I lived 1,000 and some years ago. Okay, thanks, Colossus. You're welcome, Jacqueline. Bye. Bye. <laughs> How cool is that? Hey, I love that you only do a little bit of typing and did much longer recordings. Like, why type and record? You know, just do one or the other. So she chose keywords. I loved how she started to banter with the dinosaur. Reflection of knowledge, right? I also um, noticed that her interview is probably based on the questions her teacher gave her to ask the dinosaur. You can't necessarily go huge open-ended. You structure it a little bit. And this way you can align it right with your standards and your, your lesson objectives and whatnot. So the exception to reading text for me would probably be poetry, where the, you know, the kids read their own poems, which I think is wonderful, or things literature-based repetitive books where they're doing their own pages, you know, so I can I can see recording or typing in recording in a couple cases. How about those, again, off the tops, I talked about making predictions. You're in the middle of a book, even a science book, get to a spot in the book where something's about to happen, you close the book, ask the kids what they think is going to happen, give them 10 minutes to, to add a recording of their prediction and give evidence and then draw a picture of it. And for me, I'm going to make them record before they draw because I, I can't I can't grade the drawing. I can't assume anything. So I love instead them demonstrating their knowledge first and then using the paint tools, again, as a little bit of an engagement. Public service announcements. I talked to an interview with Egypt. All kind of rich opportunities. This Bardal interview to me is hysterical. It actually comes from a couple kids in Canada. This guy, Zachary, hoots after he answers because he's the, he's the owl. So he gives the an answer and hoots. And you know what? Those middle school kids are so goofy, it's understandable. And he probably thinks he's the coolest kid in class. But you know what? That's completely fine. And that's where student choice starts to come in with a lot of these recordings. Do you want to interview? Would you rather pretend to be the owl? Right? Do you want to do something else? I mean, you give the kids a choice of sharing their knowledge with the same lesson objectives, same expectations, uh, and range from there. And that's what I love with the recordings. And again, I talked about imagery, taking pictures and adding recordings on top. So some of this is right off the top of their head. You know, explaining what the picture is. And by the way, this can be huge for math as well as art for portfolios. But you know what the most dreaded question to math is? To explain your mathematical thinking. And you know those wonderful, being sarcastic, 
dittos, they give like two lines at the bottom of the page. I need you to explain your mathematical thinking in like 12 words or less. Kids never know what to write. They always think it's stupid. I don't know what to write. The kids could take a picture of their math work and then explain how they solved it. Uh, we all know there's a lot of um, inappropriate ways of finding out the math answer. You know, it's seven. Well, that's right. But how did you get it? Did you look at your neighbor or whatever? However, having them explain what they do is great because, A, you get an idea. Do they truly understand the concept or not? But, B, you got this artifact of them explaining their understanding at this point. So I'm not a big fan of presentations because, or like bulleted list I mentioned, because I don't think people present. And when they do, it takes like three or four days. Um, so I think it's also a big time suck there because it's you're supposed to be moving on the curriculum guide. So instead of doing, and if a kid can take five words and talk about it for 50 seconds, don't get me wrong, that's brilliant. Um, but uh, the bulleted list don't have a lot of rigor. They don't have a lot of retention in it. So if they apply that knowledge meaningfully and they're doing a presentation, you know, that'll work as well. That, that'll work much better because you're capturing it instead of in front of the class. Also know that the video tool works in the same capacity. I click the video icon here at the top, one video per page, five minutes in length. And what's great for this compared to the audio is that they can hold something up and point at it. So I think of those, those technology, those engineering projects kids create, you know, they can easily talk about it. I think a, a library a kid could hold up a book and talk about the book, do like a, a book trailer, a book, you know, kind of a, a teaser. You want a story of an unusual friendship? Charlotte Webb's for you. It's a story of a friendship between a pig and a spider. So the kids can, can again, make a book pitch, encouraging others to read it without, you know, too many spoilers in it at least. So video has all sorts of options. I am obviously videoing myself. If my device had the camera in the back, I could video something and be the, the voice behind the camera type deal. So hopefully when I talked about recordings, when I talked about interviews, when I talked about retelling stories, there was at least some idea of a, a project that you could use with kids and have them do a recording. So this is my checking in. Are you still here or did you log in and walk away? Because Debbie looks at these things. I need you in the chat box to type in one idea. You're not committing yourself to teach anything, do anything. One idea of a project kids would use a recording or a video. I could see kids interview a dinosaur. That's all I'm looking for, dinosaur interview. Great. So think of that idea, put it in the chat box. There's like 20 of you. So, you know, obviously I have high expectations. There we go. Look at these. I mean, Judd, you asked me to show, I'm going to show you a QR code in a second. And yet, uh, Jen, excuse me, but the directions with fossils, I mean, you can do so many things. You can be the dinosaur. Hey, that's my leg bone. <laughs> What are you doing looking at that or something? I mean, think about kids being creative. Again, I think of those goofier kids, particularly in those ways. Jessica, those are almost like public service announcements with strategies. Perfect. Yep. Yep. I agree, Mr. Morrow. Morrow, maybe? I apologize if I got your name wrong. Yep. Good. Thank you. I see the thumbs up. And when it comes to comes to your science related stuff, your engineer projects, someone was just thinking too. What's well, wonderful again, each page, you can this project can grow over the course of two weeks because you're documenting different stages of the, the project, the building process, the thinking process, the planning ahead of time, maybe the budgeting, depending on how far you go. You know, so a lot of rich opportunities. Yep. Mr. Vigna, I again, you know how this prototype should work before and after, but you're almost doing like a commercial there. And you, you're going to want to, you're going to want to invest in one of these when I, when I finish developing it. So neat, neat opportunities. And I mentioned before, you know, part of an adventure, you know, what's wonderful, and this may often be the end of unit, but this could also be, as I said, during or even little snippets here and there, the kids can really share what they know and understand. And you're capturing an artifact that can be used as a 504 or an IEP or, or even, you know, something with um, parent conferences. And, and I know we got some, you know, primary people here too, even the language arts. There's nothing that would prevent you from assigning a template with three senses or four senses. And all you're doing is ask the students to read it, record themselves reading it. And then you do it again next month, same record, same text, new recording. Next month after that, same text, new recording. And now you have three artifacts over time. And this could be your EL kids too, hopefully showing some growth or development uh, by reading those passages. You know, and you can do the videos for speech so kids can see their, or the teachers can see their lips, the parents can too. So great for uh, younger kids and artifact creation. Well, you guys are on fire. Seriously, third session. This is a great session. Um, because, you know, and I agree with Jody's last statement here. 
those kids may describe what happened, but I think if they're writing, there's just not a lot of enthusiasm there. They, they peer out over, you know, oh, I'm done. But recording, add another page for another thing, thought or whatnot, tell what happened or whatever. I think findings via videos and recordings, you're going to get so much more rich information. Fantastic. Fantastic. So a couple of things I did want to point out. I'm going to go back and find my nature scene. My projects, there's nature scene. Is that the... You can add text objects. And what I like about text objects, I'm going to just go ahead and says double click here. So hello. Um, hello, I am a deer. Is that when you're working with text objects, you can, like if I move this over here really quick, you can resize the box into columns for like brochures and trifolds or newsletters. And as much or as little as you type will always fill the space. So if there's an article by Sammy and, and she typed 75 words and Samantha typed 200 words, you know, they can still fit it into a column or a portion because the font may be 12 or maybe 20. So I like that as well. Also, I see STEM having a lot of graphic novel potential. You know, it could be two boys. Dude, how do you convert an improper fraction to a mixed number? And then there says, I know, let me show you. And that's page one. That's my call out sticking out. So if you select a text object, there's actually the bubble option over here. Boom. Slide this over a little bit, come type A, center it, and you can do that. In addition to resizing and everything, the program will read text objects. Hello, I am a deer. And it highlighted it too. So again, kids learning the language or kids just developing their lingual skills, you're having something you can easily, you like you could type like a whole passage here, science, you name it, um, have a picture or two if you wanted. Maybe page two is a, forget page one, page two is another passage, and then page three is a comprehension question. It's a reflection on knowledge. It's apply this to that. You know, so the kids can listen to it, they can read it on their own, but for so some, some many listening to it is fine. Also, uh, thinking particularly middle school and high school, this is a fantastic self-editing tool. If you have just typed a, a newsletter portion or, or something, a report on something, I would almost encourage you to, you know, hover over this, close your eyes and listen to it. Does it make sense? Is there double words? Is your verbiage wrong? You know, what are your errors that you might gloss over? Like I do in emails and sometimes I read them so fast I miss my own mistakes. But listening to it and then using it as a self-editing stage. What's wonderful about this too, especially in the graphic novel realm, although I would not encourage a lot of printing, if you go to file and print, you can actually choose layouts like booklets, comic books, and postcards. Wixie will take like the first four pages in your project. Don't draw lines or anything on the pages. It'll take the first four pages and put them on one piece of paper, right? And that's a booklet. It'll put six on one piece of paper or a postcard. Comic book is six. A booklet is actually, it puts them in an order where you fold, you do like a hot dog fold on the paper and fold it over. And page one is in the front, page two and three in the middle, and page four in the back. And if it's a seven or a 17 or a 70 page project, you got multiple pages, you fold and staple. You know, you got a book. So anything sequential, anything you want to report, you're not using audio, video, but you're using text and imagery, you can roll in that direction. Right? I also love trading cards. The kids can design a single page and they'll fill nine up on one page and say duplicate. Um, elements from the periodic table. You know, each kid's do one. They print out a couple sheets. They got 18 to trade. They trade with other kids in class and then they come up with a group of uh, periodic uh, elements and they can sort them into different groups, kind of what the, the table says with the different coloring schemes. This could also be true for math. You know, it could be prime numbers. It could be decimal points in the real world when the kids take an order and a, a number line on their desk, you know, from batting averages to money to whatnot. So you can have a lot of opportunity for kids. In this case, they're almost creating an own resource and then sharing it to get a class set. But print options are here. I wouldn't do it often, but you could easily do that. What's nice, too, is if you go to file and export or file and download, excuse me, when you go to file and download and say you want to export a PDF, nope, that didn't do what I meant to. There's my dog again. What is going on? Go to file and share. No, 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 no. File. I thought it was download. Oh, I have a PDF print option. So when I go to file and I choose my layout like a comic book, instead of printing it straight away, I can make a PDF out of it. So you don't print out the comic book. You have the you know electronic copy of it. So there's that. All right. So recordings text objects, reading them, all sorts of great things. And just as a point of reference, if you have a sticker, it also will say what it is. Here. You know, which is great for like listening or vowel sound sorting or stuff like that for the primary grades. But with the sticker selected, if you go to the edit menu and select edit alt text, you can actually change what it says. 
and you can change it to the tune of like three or 400 characters. So if you have a science project or environment, like a biome I'm thinking now, with different animals and plants from that biome, you click on each one and it'll say you know, what it is, what it does, what component it is of the of this, the, the life in that biome. So you're making like an interactive interactive kiosk, which again, and this is where you're, you're <laughs> love the wax museum. Sometimes like Halloween is dress up as a book character, but no, dressing up, doing wax museum, kids making their own memory games. You're on fire. Miss Ware, you can leave whenever you're ready. You've done such a wonderful job. I'm I'm content with the knowledge you've gained in the first portion. <laughs> no, don't leave. There's still good stuff. So anyways, this is a nice thing for an interactive kiosk, another type of publishing opportunity that would potentially engage and motivate our students. This is the team tool. I want to talk about it really quick. Students can, again, invite members from just their sections to join them. You And then basically, when I clicked on team, I can invite Elsa is now part of my team. Elsa doesn't need to open a training with me. I'm the captain. I share with whoever's in my team. We can work synchronously or asynchronously. Again, happen at home, a kid's gone, whatever you want. No, Miss Ware, don't apologize. You keep going. I love it. Um, so it's nice for that team collaborative work. Um, we can't, you can't track changes. There's just It's not just a word doc. There's the photos, there's the videos, the whole nine yards. Um, so if something's inappropriate done, we can figure it out. Talking to one of our programmers, they can... They can look at like the, the metric coding he sees, but uh, basically it's a great opportunity for kids to do part of it a whole. If I'm doing an interview like the dinosaur, it could have been me asking questions and then him answering and I'm, because there is some storyboard to this one. I do all the questions, he does all the answer or she does, and then we resort them into correct order. So a lot of rich opportunities for the teams to do part of a whole or working together. I like that as well. And that's just, that's just there. All right. So the last, or a couple of last things I want to point out here First, you may get in the habit of assigning blank templates to kids. Now, why would you sign a blank template instead of just having them open a new project? It's because of the structure you can apply or you can embed in the project for the kids to then benefit from as far as getting them on task quicker. To that end, what I mean in English is that typically you might type the directions at the top of the page, draw a picture of the beginning of the book, and add an explanation of what happened in that scene, middle and end type deal. Typically, you would type these directions up top, but in my world, you're taking up their workspace. So instead of doing it on the page, you see this clipboard icon over here? Thank you for those of you who nodded your head. I appreciate it. When you click on the clipboard, you can type instructions right here and check it out. Here is your five minute teacher recording. So you can put what they need to do on this page and add a little explanation or clarification, do a new instruction on page three, do a new instruction on page four. I mean, my kids are researching you know, for instance, scientists or periodic table element, I may start off with a graphic organizer and I can put like a hyperlink in their instructions as well. So I may have them go research. I then have them ask the element questions. And I say, ask your element this question. Page three, ask your element this question. And when they're done, they would take their, their graphic organizer and move it to the back like a periodic table or like references, basically, a bibliography section. So you can really partition your assignment completely and just leave each page blank. My wife is a reading specialist in Baltimore County, and she worked with a fifth grade teacher. And the kids, some kids are just stupid these days. I, oh, let's say it's blame it on COVID. But, and I know Jody's a little surprised I used the word, but let's be honest. Kids are just getting goofier and goofier. So the teacher spends two minutes explaining what they're going to do. Then they start, and none of them know what to do because they weren't listening to you. So they embedded these recordings on each page, like a minute or two long. And the kids self paced themselves the project. And what kid comes up to her and the other teacher and says, this is amazing. When I'm looking at a page, I can find out exactly what to do by clicking the recording. And it's just, you kind of want to roll your <laughs> That's right, Stephen, you're awesome. You know, so keep, keep listening directions on the computer instead of to me. Uh, but that's the nice thing about those. Five minutes gives you a lot of time to be talking if you need it. So I love that component. When I am ready to sign to students, I can go to the file menu and assign my template to the kids, and this is one of three places to assign. You, and many of you will have pull down menus for media specials to whatnot of all the classes that you teach. There is a way to change what it says if it's that county gibberish, by the way, it's under settings. You can give it a class a nickname just for you. Do you want all kids to get it? Do you want parts of the kids to get it? Part of the class, small group, individuals. If today is the first day, the moment you press save is, is the moment they'll receive it, but if they're in Wixie, they may need to refresh or log out and log back in to get it. 
But if you're having one of those days, just tell them to wait a second and sign it. The end date is not as important. The end date is only there if they never open the template, the blank template disappears. But once they open and get their copy, they, they you know, that's in their folder, they won't lose it. So set up your start date, you know, you're planning for tomorrow, you're planning for next week, whatever, go from there. Ms. Uh, Mr. Mara, if they won't, I will. So yes, we can easily set it up. You can have access to all the homeroom classes or you can have access to specific grade levels. And that's a great case. If you're not a teacher record, you don't give out grades and you still want access, you can. In addition, classroom teachers have the option of giving you the ability to see their students. So if you are working with specific teachers, you let me know, I'll give you the directions. They're like three clicks. And this way you can say, hey, you know, Mr. Thomas, can you help me out and let me see your kids? Because I want to be able to provide feedback on these as well. So if you go to the kids, all students, just know that when you, I'm going to log out of my teacher account and log back in as a student, just know when you assign it in Wixie, it's the first thing they see at the top. It's new assignment. Now, this is by me. If they have assignments from other teachers, they would obviously see those. When they click on it, they open the template up. You know, they can work on it, whatever. When they go back to their home page, which again, this all looks the same as me. When they go back to their home page, you'll notice that it's no longer a new assignment. It's my copy of the file. Right? And this is the one they would continue to work on. In addition, students work portfolios every year, meaning that it'll portfolio, like a fifth grade student may have four years. A sixth grade may have even more, depending on how long they've been using Wixie. But if you're looking for a STEM portfolio specifically, it just can be you know, automatically built into Wixie because when a kid opens up a grade three file, they can't change it. They just get a new copy of it to modify. So these are like read-only files in those multiple grades. So portfolios are super easy in Wixie. Even if you record or capture a, pro a product from another program and then bring it into Wixie and again, maybe add an audio recording reflection or, or, or whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and log out and back into the teacher account. Because what I want to talk about is accessing student work. It's actually ridiculously easy. It's under the student tab. You see your classes, your pull down list again are here. When you click on the thumbnail, you get a large view of it. This one has a recording. I think they, they yeah, I know they read, they read that. The tastiest thing in the world is every chocolate mixed together to make a 10,000 foot dessert. Yum, yum, yum. And again, this is a book off of uh, things that are most in the world. It's the superlatives, the ists. So the kids just created another page of the repetitive book. And I think this works for anybody, particularly the math course book. For those of you math teachers know about the math course, the kid wakes up, he's dazed. Everything in life is a, is a story problem. And it goes into those high-end uh, algebra problems and, and uh, calculus problems too. So the kids could make their own next page to math course and then give it to a friend to have them solve it. So you can easily do something repetitive with that. And the science world and the repetitive from animals to whatnot, I, I just think of so many rich opportunities to just add to the book. Now, now that I've looked at it, the most important part of this is to mark it as complete because it's basically saying you're done. You can't change it anymore. The last thing you want to do is save it for a parent conference or for a 504 meeting or something or an IEP, and you go to share it at that meeting, and it's a disaster. The kid messed it up at home. But if you mark it as complete, you can't change it anymore. It's static. You can change your mind so the kid can work on it, but mark it as complete. And then under feedback, click this plus sign and leave a comment. And it'll show up over on the right-hand side where the paint tools are. So give a comment, mark it as complete is all you really need to do. You could export it, download it as like a PDF or something. If you love the project so much, you can actually put it in your showcase. All you gotta do is slide it over and you will now have a copy of this student file indefinitely. They graduate, they go on to middle school, whatever. You'll have a copy so you can share it next year's kids or you can use it for a different subject area or whatnot. So you can collect your good stuff. If you have a like a personal goal to, to improve your use of technology, you can even use that for artifacts with your principal or administration or department chair or whatnot. And then I move on to the next kid. You know, that's really all there is to it, you know, when it comes to projects. You can search by project names as well if you just want to see the one project, give the project names. Uh, so that's that's a nice feature here as well. So now that I've looked at kids' work and now that I've created maybe a template from scratch, you should know that there are existing templates. Um, well over, well, close to 3,500 now. The curriculum templates are less than objective specific. Like we have an idea of what indicator you're going to match by hitting that. 
the templates folder are much more generic. We're not sure what you're going to do with that graphic organizer or the cube templates or whatnot. But I am going to go to curriculum. Uh, we're going to open up science. And under science, we can do the inquiry process. Let's just see what we got. Four-step design, five senses templates, empathy map, engineering design, investigation notes. I see, I wonder. Eh, let me look at that. So you click on a thumbnail. You get the big view. If it's a sorting one, a lot of teachers like to do it. Just know you can't change this in any way right now. You're just looking at it. If it's multiple pages, you can move through it. If you don't record yourself reading instructions, by the way, it'll read it, uh, FYI. I like this a lot. I'm going to use it exactly as it is so I can assign it to my kids. Boom. Same menu as before. Class, how many want it? When do you want them to get it? However, if I see myself customizing this, maybe I actually give a little more information. Like I see, I wonder, and we're looking at trees or something. That's where you click customize. And at this point, you get your own copy of the file to do whatever you want to. So maybe I duplicate this a couple of times. Oh, that actually didn't go to my edit menu. Uh, let me open it here. There it is. I'm going to try opening it this way. That was a little glitch. So, And it did it again. What is going on? Basically, I should be able, and I wonder if this is a file glitch, I should be able to modify it. I could duplicate, like I said, and make more pages. I can add my own instructions to it. But then you would assign your copy, not the one from the templates folder or curriculum folder. And the other way you can assign it is by clicking the ellipsis dots uh, next to the project here in the My Projects view. And just know there are two basic views that are available to students and teachers, the list view and the grid view. I like the grid view, uh, but sometimes your kids will have the list and they'll freak out because their page doesn't look like yours. And if you really want, there's a detail one available for teachers as well with objectives and things like that. So the curriculum library is pretty stacked. Let me go back to my grid view. I recommend all the different folders, including the month by month, which has some, you know, in this case, some, uh, what do we got? March Groundhog Day theme stuff, and, or was that February? Uh, March of St. Patrick's Day. But a lot of times, poems, we got a social emotional section, uh, cutesier things as well. There's music as well. Uh, but again, lots of different sections, a lot of different folders. And we do see these idea boards, which are scattered throughout, or choice boards. You know, if we're doing, for instance, comprehension, maybe you're doing it specifically on a, um, on a book. I'm going to go into language arts, uh, whatever it be, science or whatnot, reading and comprehension. There's this... Um, comprehension choice board in which the kids can choose one of six ways to demonstrate this knowledge. And these all hyperlink to different templates. And they're gonna do that one. So student buy-in is a big part, I think, of all instruction, particularly with the older kids, intermediate, middle school, and high. So having some choices is a good thing. Wixie 101 is here at the bottom. This is a great stash for quick overview resources and videos. How do Wixie design tools work, working in teams? Most of them, like I said, are one or two minute videos. There's this nice teacher tool review. How do I customize templates and assign them? How do I combine pages from different kids? Things like that. Integration folders. Again, most of our stuff is elementary, middle. Anne Arundel is one of the few districts that use in the high school, and we see some very, very enthusiastic people there as well. Um, so those are there. And Stacy, are those buddy classes are cross grade level? Like it's like a book buddy with like fifth grader and first grader? Because you as a teacher, if you have access to multiple classes, you can set up a team project that is across grade level. So you would open up a temp, you'd have to open up a lot of templates, open up one and assign it to this kid and this kid, first grade, fifth grade. And they can each work on it when they like go to library or whatever, or back and forth. They don't have to be on the same time. So if you have access to multiple classes, you can generate teams across classes so those buddies can take effect. Um, and if you want to do a little webinar on that, I'm happy to show you. Take like five minutes. So we can do it in slow motion. There's also some webinars from teachers from working with phys ed and music to Wixifying your math lessons, which this is a pretty cool session from a teacher. There are a lot of guidebooks, grade level using it, as well as with curriculum areas, including ELL. And there's a nice STEM one here, STEM and STEAM Elementary. But again, those ideas can be expanded, so to speak, into the middle school and high school levels. So those are all within Wixie. So as valuable as all of this is, some of our better resources are just in Wixie.com. And in order to just go to the resources, you gotta log out of your account because your account is in Wixie.com just as the resources are. So you log out of Wixie and you just go to Wixie.com. And the first thing I wanna talk about is a fantastic CYA opportunity. And that means what you think it does. 
Now, I am sure that there are no demanding parents in Anne Arundel County. Debbie's assured me it's the best place in the world. It's like heaven on earth. But if for a moment you have a demanding parent, there's a nice way to kind of give them that information in advance and just redirect it to them. So when I go to Wixie.com, there's this parents tab in the upper right hand corner. And this provides not only an overview of Wixie and how to troubleshoot accessing it from home, but it provides our complete and total privacy policy, read and privacy policy. Uh, the Department of Defense, the schools around the world from uh, Korea to Germany, they use our product and we were vetted to the Pentagon. So I assure you, Wixie is highly secure and it has all of its I's and T's dotted and crossed. However, if I'm working with parents that may or may not be demanding, I may do a preemptive strike and just do something in a newsletter or whatnot and say, um, uh, as the uh, biography unit approaches or as our science experiments uh, progress, our students will be utilizing a dynamic productivity tool called Wixie. This cloud-based resource is available to all of our students. And if you're interested in learning more about the product and its policies, here's the link. And it really is kind of a wash your hands. Even if you know the answer, I often ask parents to, well, did you have a chance to look at the information on the page I, I provided? So you can really redirect them and just let them get what they need here because there's all these what's appropriate grade levels, doing different things and ideas at home, even for our summer. We're working in summer because your accounts, the kids will stay active all summer. So kids can use it over the summer for those parents who want to don't want their kids to slide or whatever they may see. Don't want them to live a joyous summer. They want them to put them to work. Um, so yes, know that parents link is here. In addition, this teacher link is probably as good as it gets for all of you as far as ideas. So I went to Wixie.com and I went to teachers and this first link is it right here. Explore Wixie projects across the curriculum. I need some announcer voice there. So when I click on this, this has a resource page for everything we've ever created as far as curriculum and grade levels. It does K to eight, it does your different language arts, but here's all your math from shapes and geometry and elementary use. Does your sciences, does different social studies as well. But if I go into like, and I think there's a STEM one over here on the side, side initiatives. Let me see what the STEM folder. So most of these pages will consist of legit student samples, including the dinosaur interview, by the way, which is in grade two. Often, a, here's a template, sometimes a lesson plan, which is like observation quality. So my roller coaster idea. So this is a multi page student sample where they designed a roller coaster. Global warming, here's with the lesson plan, not bad. Saving Florida Panthers, like a public service announcement, I believe. Infographics, which I just think are ridiculously cool. Interview with animals, there's one with a the jellyfish. I don't think I've listened to that before. Interview with the jellyfish. And I love this integer man as a superhero that shows how to solve basically algebraic equations. So he's, he's like number seven arms and number eight body. and. He swoops in like a superhero and solves the problem with them. So it's making it a comic book. After that, we retweet what other teachers have tweeted saying, I used Wixie, in this case, STEM, to do this. And each of these, to me, are a five-second idea. I like it, I don't like it. I like it, I don't like it. Design a bedroom. We had so much fun designing our bedroom using Wixie. How many shapes can you spot? It looks like younger kids. I have been a teacher younger kids. Let me look at this. You know, Let me think about it. I do, I don't. Survival and adaption computational thinking and patterns, habitat design, you know, do I like them, do I not? So this is an easy way to come up with potential integration ideas with just checking out what other people have posted. And again, those upper ones, you can use as samples to show the kids, I had this kind of in mind, jellyfish, I know we're doing, again, something else, explorers or whatnot, so that would, you know, could easily do that, well, that's more social studies. Same would be true for science in our special areas, world language, back to school. Grade levels, you know, I look at something like, uh, I think the first grade teacher said they're here. Testimonial, this one's from Prince William County. The third grade one is actually from Anne Arundel. An article, student sample, it's downloading student sample, student sample, and then many more tweets, which will populate here in a second. So easy, easy way to get some ideas, non-threatening. If you're in a support role, send a link to your colleagues. That's also a nice way. So I'm going to bring up my email address again. Debbie just put it in the chat box. Again, you got you got some great resources. Don't get me wrong, within Anne Arundel County. But if you want me to, let's slow down and talk about this project and how it could work, how teams would work, how to make rubrics. I didn't get into making assessments at all. And although there's information under File and Help and under the Wixie 101, uh, or under the Profile Image and Help, um, just know that there you know there's so much more. And I am happy to explain those any way you want. Um, she gave me a nine-minute warning. There we go. Actually, look at that. 
you're the third session, so I guess I'm just talking faster. Or um, I haven't shared you stuff that I thought I shared because I shared to the first and second session, so it blurs. Um, but here's my email. I am a good Twitter follower. You won't find out what I did this weekend, but you will find out Wixi resources that are available or we're pointing out to from our company. But I also retweet what teachers in Maryland and Virginia say they're doing with Wixi as well. And Anne Arundel being a very active district, you know, you may find out what a teacher in another building is doing that you had no clue of. And if you want more information, well, you can shoot them an email because you know them. So you'll see stuff from Maryland districts all the time, and they're probably teaching about the same thing you are about the same time. So rich opportunity there. Deb's going to pop up the attendance sheet, I believe. I'll give that her. Yes, sheet. I'll do that. There we go. So you need to be sure to sign in before you go. Uh, if anything you picked up today, I hope you picked up. And again, kind of goes back to my waxy, wacky session description. STEM is a rich opportunity for creativity and experimental, or I want to say fun, fun learning. You know, you get hands on. I mean, so many kids, all kids should be just big in science and, and, and math, in instance. And we just see so much of them in bombarded with worksheets. And, you know, being able to find assessment opportunities, whether it's the end of unit or during the lesson, where the kids can be a little more creative in what they're learning, what they know, and they're sharing that knowledge. And, and I think Wixie's going to provide that that platform for you. So I hope you I hope you found something to walk away with. And I hope you've made a personal goal if you're just now getting to use Wixie or starting to use it, to use it once or twice here before the end of the school year and to see how your students respond. I, I know they're going to respond well, especially if you establish expectations for both time and for uh, content. Um, and I just, you know, I hope you experience that as well. So with that, sign in and enjoy your lunchtime. Thanks so much, Scott. Always amazing. And everybody, don't forget um, that Anne Arundel County folder has lots of templates um, that are created by our teachers for you that are curriculum based. So 